Hello everyone. I'm so excited to be back. I've been trying to think about what I wanted to post next because I'm trying to spread the lead series out and you're like, Seton, that is like excessive spreading a series out because it takes me so long to get another video back up because I am horrible at it and I get so sidetracked that I cannot keep up, but I'm working on it. We all have something that we're working on. This so happens to be one of my things. Um, but something I wanted to talk about today is I wanna to talk to people going into college. So if you are choosing the college path, this is for you. I want to give you some pieces of advice. These are actually things that I'm working on with um, my advisor at school right now. I'm going to be I'm helping her teach a freshman entry course. So I have been coming up with curriculum for that. And there's just some advice that I feel like is really helpful and can really help you because I am a first generation college student. Um, these were things I had to like learn myself or learn from my mentors in college. I've had the most amazing professors and coaches and advisors. So, I've been very blessed in that area, but not everyone always is, and everyone's college experience is different. So my first piece of advice for you today is to make sure you're focusing on learning. I understand that there is this thing about college where you're finally on your own and you get to do all these things and you're independent. Um, but you need to make sure that you continually remind yourself that you are there to learn. You are there to obtain an education. So make sure you're focusing on that, okay? Be putting the multitude of your effort into your education because you will thank yourself later down the road. We don't want anyone to get to that senior year and be missing courses that they needed or feel like they're behind or be unsure about what they're doing. So just please, 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 please focus on your education. That's what you're there to do. You are ultimately there to learn. You're paying for that too. So if, you know, if me telling you that that's what you're there for doesn't motivate you to really focus on that, just know that you're, you are paying for it. <laughs> so, um, you know, you, if you're, if you're not, taking control of that then essentially like you're you're kind of like doing it to yourself you're not doing yourself a favor if you're not really focusing on your learning experience because you are paying for it so the second thing that I would like to tell you is don't be afraid of trying new things um one thing that I did is I was the first uh person in my family along with my two cousins to play a collegiate sport. So I went to a JUCO my first year and I played soccer and it was just a phenomenal experience for me. But one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure I didn't cut myself short of experiences. So I did um, my associates in liberal arts and I did general studies because that enabled me to get a better idea of a bunch of courses at once. I was able to take classes in multiple multiple different areas and I was able to like experience all those different professions a little bit like surface area, which has really helped me and it has taught me so many skills. I Right now I have a 3.9, I graduate in December with my bachelor's degree and I graduated valedictorian of my class um, at my JUCO with a 4.0 and because of the degree that I chose and the way that I chose to do it, I feel like that is ultimately what helped me obtain uh, the experiences and also just it looks great on your transcript, okay? So make sure you do not cut yourself short. If you have the option on your degree plan to take something that is like outside the box or doesn't really have anything to do with your career path because with your extra classes, they will allow that sometimes. I highly recommend taking something that 
has nothing to do with your career path. <laughs> Just make sure you're not cutting yourself short. Something else that you need to know going into school is you need to learn how to advocate for yourself. Whenever we are in high school, we have people that like, it's, it's more of their job to help advocate for you. So whenever you get to college, you're kind of like, oh, like if I need to do something, who's going to do it? No one's going to do it for you. You need to learn to do it yourself. It's, you know, time for you. You're an adult, an adult, quotations around that. Um, so you need to learn how to advocate for yourself. If you don't understand something, you need to ask your advisor. If you feel like you're not getting what you need from some area in some way, form, or fashion, you need to speak up. That's what your advisor is there to help you do. Uh, you advocate for yourself to them. And then in return, if you're doing what you're supposed to, I will tell you nine times out of 10, they will be advocating for you as well. But you have to learn how to step up and speak up, be confident um, and do that for yourself. Because like I said, you are paying for that experience. So you need to make sure that you are getting what you need out of it. But you have to be doing your part in order for like change to occur if something is going on. We can't not show up for class and then be upset because we have a poor grade when the professor has told you and put on the syllabus that attendance is part of your grade. Don't do that, <laughs> okay? D don't do that, don't do that. It's there, they've told you, it's there in writing. They have to have that approved through the university. So they're always backed up. So you need to make sure that you're doing the things that you're supposed to be doing as well and then advocating for yourself on top of that. My last piece of advice for you is to get sleep. <laughs> make sure you are getting sleep because you're gonna have essays due, you're gonna have tests to study for, and everyone's degree and career path are different. So I have, I, I can't even tell you how many essays I have written. I cannot tell you. I would have to literally go through four years of documents and count them all up. But it's a lot and it takes days to write essays sometimes and you have to plan those essays out and you have to make sure that you're reading the material in order to uh, produce those essays and you have to have, you need to proofread them. You need to read them to someone else to make sure that it makes sense to them. If when writing essays, let's go off on a tangent real quick. When writing an essay, if you are having to explain something or sum something up, if you are in an English class and you're reading a novel and you have to do like so many pages of a summary, I want you to write the essay. And then what I want you to do is after each page or each paragraph, I want you to read that essay to somebody that has no idea what you're writing about. I have taken a lot of philosophy classes and this is what I've done every time. I've never gotten below an 86 on an essay. Okay, guys, listen, listen to me, listen to me right now. This is so important. If you want to do well on essays, I want you to write your essays and then I want you to read it to people who have no idea what you're doing. And if they understand, you did a good job, okay? Cause that's the goal. So let's rewind. <laughs> Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about because I don't know. I'm like passionate about the essay thing. Um, goodness, let me think. What was I even talking about when I went off on that little tangent? Let me go back and look real quick. We were sleeping. That's what we were doing. Uh, so back to that. Make sure that you are getting sufficient rest. You need like eight or nine hours of sleep at night to be like that's what's considered healthy. So you need to make sure that you are doing that for yourself so you don't have brain fog, so you're not falling asleep in your classes. Um, you want to be able to not just be present, but be attentive. I feel like there is a huge difference between hearing uh, what a professor is saying and listening. Uh, something else that I would highly recommend, and I know this is not the popular thing. I know everyone likes to 
typing and tap on their laptop. But if you are able and if you're committed, I'm going to challenge you to write your notes. <laughs> write those notes, guys, okay? And don't only write your notes. Um, don't just write down word for word what they're saying. I want you to not only do like quotes of some pieces of information that are important, but I want you to write it in a way that like you would be able to go